Yeah, I was re- I was actually rehearsing. That's what I was doing. That's that's what oh, we're gonna call that. That was that was beautiful. I hate it when you're rehearsing. Sounds good. Makes me mad. Yeah, <laughs> do a lot of that. Unfortunately. Uh. Okay. So let's see. We found that fixed CPM model wasn't the most straightforward way to share revenue with creators, says Mike Minton, who is the vice president of monetization at Twitch. In an email to The Verge, so we're now launching a new model that's not only easier to understand, but also increases ad payouts and paying creators 55% of the revenue for each ad that runs on their stream. Isn't that beautiful? Twitch partners now get more money. That's all I heard. So, well, for Twitch, like I said before, Twitch partners. They had most of the time they have contracts that say, "Hey, you need to sh- you need to run ads for this um, this specified number of time every hour." Uh, That's just a fact. Nick Merckx has that deal. Quite a lot of partnered streamers have this deal. A lot of a lot of orgs get you this deal too. Mm. So p- people who are sponsored by big gaming organizations, they usually have that deal too. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. I mean, yeah, it's definitely something. Uh, I don't know why they don't. They, like, my thing is, if they really wanted people to to watch ads or something like that, they should, or or to to not want ads, right? To not promote it. Mm-hmm. Just make it so. Just fucking plug Twitch Turbo super hard. Like Twitch Turbo should be something that that most streamers should be promoting. Like honestly, right. I don't see. Granted, they'll lose some money, but at the same time, you'll have less people fucking crying every time there's an ad. And even me, I fucking hate ads. Yeah, usually when I'm watching like uh, Bliss or Shay or something like that, and they're they gotta run ads, bro. I get actually, (laughs) I get actually irritated by it. I'm like, fuck, like, goddamn, this bitch needs to pay her bills. Fuck. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> it says though affiliates are not yet included in this program. Ah, oh, okay. They're going to be included in August. They said sometime in August. Uh, yeah. Which they qualify for the fifty-five percent ad revenue starting in August, so long as they run three minutes of ads per hour. Twitch will also disable the highly annoying pre-roll ads for users who run ads for the same amount of time. Beautiful, beautiful. I think that's lovely, man. I think the that's thing lovely. is, I didn't even, I didn't even think that the pre rolls were the problem. the The problem with the pre rolls is that they would, you would watch an ad right from a streamer, and then you click onto another streamer's right after, and you get an, a pre roll. Yeah, you get a pre roll. Yeah. Or that I hate. I hate when I click on a streamer stream. I get a pre roll. And then it just conveniently happens to be the time where they're about to run an ad. Then I got to watch three more minutes of ads. And I'm like, yo, this is, I didn't want to watch you that bad. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm okay, man. Uh, that shit don't make no damn sense. So, yeah, I mean, Turbo, like, I don't know why tur- Twitch Turbo is such an underutilized thing the that fuck? they're. Okay, hold on. This is the first I'm hearing it. What the fuck is Twitch Turbo? Okay, so Twitch Turbo is basically a a service on top of the already existing subscription service. Okay. That basically if, for $10 a month, you get no, or I think it's like $10 a month. You get absolutely no ads on any streams. Really? Yeah, exactly. I think it's $10, 10 or 15. Okay. But that's okay. not including your subscription to a streamer. Your not subscription including already your does subscription. that. Yeah. Yeah. Your okay. subscription already does that. When you subscribe to a streamer, uh, huh. But when you use Twitch Turbo, suddenly the the Twitch streams that you are not subscribed to, they also have no ads. Interesting. Okay, Prime, so it's the platform thing wide. With Prime is if you had Prime Gaming in the past, you would get no ads at all. Okay. But they changed it so you now need Turbo to do it. Uh uh-uh. uh. Even though Turbo was a thing in the past, uh, Prime Gaming for some reason also did it. Okay, and you can't get Turbo with just because you have Prime, right? Exactly. Okay, 
This is this is terrible. Prime gives you a free subscription to one streamer a month. Okay. But Turbo is a uh, basically a monthly subscription you pay to not Platform see any wide. ads. Gotcha. Okay, so you're paying Twitch directly. You're not paying the streamer. Yeah, you're playing. You're paying Twitch directly. Okay. All right. I see. Twitch definitely want their money. They want that shit back. Yeah, oh I mean God. they're they're at a massive deficit every year, so. <laughs> Oh man, these guys need to get it together, man. This how long do you think Twitch is gonna last before they're like, hey, we gotta do something drastic? Like what, another four or five years? I mean, I'm honestly drastic, uh, I don't know about drastic. Drastic probably is four or five years, but I think in the short term they're going to be definitely considering more aggressive options for like advertising and things like that and with streamers. You think they finally gonna let Amaranth ter- take her top off? That's what they I'm asking. Probably would. Yeah, uh, that's basically. I, mean, I don't what doubt it at this point. I wouldn't doubt that. That's a that's a factor in it. I mean, a not safe for work section. I, I I've, I've been preaching that for a while, man. I think Twitch needs it. You know, they. Yeah, need we have s- talked about that. Yeah, so I don't see why they couldn't. Other sites have it. So I mean, that's the thing is with that is like you would think with how popular certain metas of twitch have been that they would just have done that right I like oh think, yeah, yeah this is a this is, you have to be an 18 plus to watch this stream and you have to verify that yeah i would assume and if anybody that, slips through the cracks that's basically on like hey listen you're not monitoring what your kids are watching exactly so it's and it, it's got to be a very explicit like, hey, this is not safe for work. Your children should not be watching this. Right. Granted, you should get that people, warning literally every time you come viewers. on the Yeah, certain streamers would definitely use viewer, lose viewers, but at the same time, it's like, hey, you want to you wanna avoid this? I'm not like, going to lie. Gonna I do. would stop watching a lot of people. Well, I already don't watch a lot of people. I watch like maybe four or five people, but I would stop watching those four or five people for a not safe for work section? Shit. Come on now. Come and on I, now. Obviously, there's probably going to be limits to it. You'd probably get limited advertising, limited things like that. Right. But I mean, maybe it requires think, a paid though. service, you know? I don't know about that. that I think the pr- paid service would be too much. You then they, so? just be, they just be straight up losing more money. Mm. I mean, maybe. Yeah, you pay the $10 a month. I mean, hey, listen, you're already in the not safe for work section. Like we, we can verify that you're over the age of let's round up. Let's say instead of 18, let's make it 21, right? You're over the age of 21, right? We verified that credit card ID, you know, whatever the fuck they want to do, right? However they want to do it. Cause Postmates and Uber Eats and DoorDash, they have a way to verify that somebody is, you know, of a certain age and it's taking pictures of the front and back of your ID. Right. And they verify that, yep. you know, through, you know, like they're, company that they use for background checks or whatever so they can verify correct age maybe make it that ten dollars a month you know what i mean because once you go on there it becomes a cam site and the thing about like sites like chatterbait and like all these other ones is they allow a limited amount of time of free watching so if the creator is streaming and they hit the privacy button it's no longer you can't watch it if you're just viewing, if you're not like a paid sub to that person. So that's something that exists. So I'm sure that could be implemented somehow. Uh, mm. I'm sure it would be more in Twi- Twitch's benefit to make that nine ninety nine barrier specifically for the entire not safe for work section, not just per per creator. You know, they probably I mean? have to do a, a no ads thing with that, too, right? Like I, I guess or like limited ads, like there'd nation, be specific ads. Shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, maybe. Because they still have to run ads. Like I, I mean, at the end of the day, they're gonna run ads. Like that's literally what they have to do. So even if like they're yeah. offering, like, hey, here's a service where there's no ads at all. But once you step into that not safe for work section, you've basically have verified. Oh, you're old enough for us to shove ads in your face. Like we're mm. gonna go crazy. Adam so and Eve ad. yeah whoo see and this would probably open up twitch to new advertisers that they didn't have access to before so 
Yeah, but the same the thing is, if they know that things going on, maybe they they're less likely to do do ads with them too with Twitch. I guess. I mean, you like, know. Like, remember when when the ad apocalypse happened? Coke was like entirely pulled out. Yeah, but the, that was also an issue with white supremacy, not sexual content. True. So, but who knows? Know. Maybe Coke doesn't want to be affiliated with that. Yeah, that's know. a good point. That's a good point. I've never seen a Coca Cola ad on Twitch though. Uh, I there was you don't remember Coke gaming? <laughs> that was a long time ago. Damn, Coke that gaming. was a long time ago. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't. Re- I forgot. I actually about that. found that streamer through that, and I was like, "What the? Wait, what?" I oh, remember wow. there was a one of the streamers was like she was getting flack for the Coke gaming shit because she was a part of the ad, right? And I was like, "Wait, what?" I was so confused by it because it was such a random thing. People, people hate it when you get about. money. It was it was very random, but I was like, I actually f- watched the streamer from it, and like she was actually incredibly entertaining. Really? Yeah, that's rare. A woman entertaining? Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that is <laughs> that one is crazy. <laughs> Come on, man! It's all jokes and sarcasm. We 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 know women yeah. are more entertaining. On, on obviously. Nah, nah, I don't know about that one. You don't think women are more entertaining than men? I can think I of several like, ways. Not okay. What? Not all of them. It's just I'm a general you. statement that, that yes, like yeah, that's genuinely what I believe. I'm far more entertained by a woman I doing something been. than a man doing something. I promise you. I guess I I, I haven't seen it. Mm. I haven't found a lot of funny female comics though. To be fair, ah, I see. So you just hate women. I guess. you just think women are funny and you, that they are. That's not what I said. But... They're incapable of entertaining I mean, anything aside from using their body. 100%. That's crazy. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I just listen. I'm just conveying what I heard. That's all. Yeah, you you <laughs> might need to get your ears checked, buddy. Maybe, maybe my ears and my eyes, because I can't see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, hundred, yeah, hundred percent. But I, I, I don't know. I, I think the in the female comedy space, it's been it's like kind of been ruined by certain comics who just say certain things about their body you know what i mean the only one i could think and of plagiarism that... and plagiarism yeah 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 <laughs> and plagiarism plagiarism I mean, one doesn't help. that's a crazy that's a crazy bar that's a crazy bar man there's definitely some of these women out here that absolutely i'm not saying all of them aren't to... funny i'm just saying i have not found a lot of funny uh, a lot of them that are funny right what about uh but then again i haven't done an extensive amount of research you know who whitney cummings is uh, I think I do. She's actually she's actually really funny. I, I she's one of the few female comedians that I'm like, yeah, she's absolutely funny. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's like, uh, do I not watch enough female comics to know like which ones are my taste of funny and which ones aren't? I have to say my taste of funny because you know obviously laughter is and humor is subjective. So you know yes. I want to I want to state that, but it's just not that many female comics in general like now that i really think about it there's just not that many so there's like 15 it's kind of the same thing on twitch of you if you think about it right there the there aren't that many female streamers right like very successful ones that is right 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 yeah that's probably why i stick to compared to the males oh yeah if anything there's too many males there's just too many like and not every i let's get this out of the way because i feel like we fall into this category not everybody needs to be streaming not everybody needs to have a podcast not everybody i just i had to get that out of the way man yeah not not everybody is supposed to be doing stuff like this it's just it's so crazy to hear some people's takes and stuff like that and they're like affiliated and they're partnered and they're getting money doing all of this stuff and it's just like they're terrible people (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, it, that's the thing though. Like, you can't really choose who gets success. It's unfortunate, but the lizard people do. Like, I think I think the lizard people decide that stuff. Uh the lizard people do. But I I'm not in communication with the lizard people, so I can't really, you know what I mean, <laughs> speak on what their agenda is. Of course. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. I it's definitely just, feel like there's. Hey, this is gonna sound wild, but. I definitely think there's implants for sure because I remember 
I don't know if it was last year or year before last. It was Russ and one uh, somebody, some other really popular artist was talking about how there's uh, implants in the entertainment industry where they like the labels or like the organizations that are behind them will pay for like views and streams and all this other stuff and make it look as organic as possible. Oh, yeah. In hopes that, oh, this person is going to be famous and then we won't have to do this anymore. And we'll we'll get an ROI on it. And they spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars marketing these people that are not funny, not talented, like all of this stuff just for people not to really fuck with them. I remember Russ was talking about he came across one artist that had like 5.2 million streams a month or something like that, but only had like a thousand 200 like active listeners or some shit like that and he was like you can't tell me that's not a that's not a industry plant i was like oh shit like and he had like a Maybe whole right. yeah he had like a whole list he was going through of like people like that he at one point in time considered opposition because he his he, like he wasn't streaming like that like he wasn't getting numbers like that and i think even guap dad talked about it too at one point i think he even has he has a song about it about how people well I mean, there's tons of people who have songs about uh, faking your streaming numbers and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, of course, you know that's endless. But I don't know, man. I think Twitch is in the same space. I think some people are just paid to be on the platform. I actually don't think anybody's watching them at all. I think it's a, I think it's a ploy. There's a, there's definitely a lot of people. I even. Like me, I was doing a search and we found this one guy, me, th me and my friends, we found this one dude and he like, he bought a, his stream. He was playing Valorant, right? And he was like not being, <laughs> he wasn't talking, he wasn't being entertaining, but he had like 50 to 100 views. Or it might've been more than that, actually. It might've been like 200, 200 views. Yo, that's crazy. And the funny thing was, I think this guy was botting on Siege too. And he, we checked his stream out, and nobody was talking. Or if people did talk, it was like the same couple messages. It was like a couple bots talking. Yikes. And it was like only us. Not bots it talking was like, to each other. It was crazy. I'm telling you, this shit is... <laughs> people definitely do that. Just because they know if your search is higher on in the Twitch platform... You'll get more views by proxy. Yo, could you imagine being that hungry for something you're not supposed to do? Like something that you're not meant to do. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, if that's a wise insane. man once said, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. I mean, I I guess, but like, how far do you go before you're like, damn, I'm not reaching anything. Like, I'm not going anywhere that you just kind of i mean but you got to think if you're paying for views like the numbers are going to say oh you plus oh, you, on the on your twitch dashboard is going to say oh you plus you plus 50 you plus 100 oh look at you you got new subs you know what i mean so yeah but i thing... mean no chats like very very little chats like i mean that's got to make you feel like shit because you're not cultivating an actual audience you're just botting yourself like i could i could I understand mean, trying to like cheat the system a little bit and maybe put like 50 viewers you know like bought it for 50 you know what i mean then you're like oh okay i can i can make some movement off of 50 but to like jump jump hurdles and milestones just i don't know about that i don't know man i don't know i mean you got a thing man he he wanted it he wanted it I mean, maybe he could have got affiliate off of it. Or not affiliate, but partner. Yo, botting for affiliate is crazy. Like, <laughs> But you don't need to bot. You don't even need to bot for that affiliate. Is, that is insane. Botting for in affiliate is something else, man. I, I Listen, I can't tell you what it, what it is. That, I yeah, think. I can definitely tell you what it is. It's stupid is what it is. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, he's having seven people in chat. I think what is it to make affiliate? It's like what fifty hours and seven yeah, people in chat. Fifty hours and like yeah, seven, five or seven. Yeah, five to seven. Yo, the gap between affiliate and partner is is gigantic. By the way, like trying to get seventy five active people in in chat, and you're not a you're not a TikToker is is kind of nuts. 
Yeah, 75. I was looking at it today because I was doing research for the the ad, uh, the 55 percent ad change. Uh -huh. And I was looking at partner. I was like, they want you like 60 hours. They want 75 viewers. And like most of this shit is attainable, right? 60 hours stream stream on 12 different days. Yeah, that's easy. That's easy. But 75 viewers, it's like and th the thing is with with partner is that there there is a chance there's a high chance that even if you do get 75 that they will reject your offer like that's the thing about partner is that they can reject you at any moment yeah that's nuts they can reject you if they if you're not accepted they're just gonna reject you hmm. it, and it happened to big streamers too i heard a, a i've Heard a couple of stories I, of I think, streamers getting rejected at like a say, thousand didn't, views plus. Yeah, didn't Jideon like when he first applied? Like the first two times they denied him. Uh, I believe so, but there are other that's other streamers had that too. That's insane, and it's like whoa. Mm. If you're, I remember this one this one lady. She said she was averaging like a thousand viewers, and they denied her. Damn. And it yeah, was like, whoa, uh, that's, that's strange behavior, honestly. And if you don't, the thing about that, too, is, is if you don't have a, uh, what is it, an org behind you, they might not give you the ad split either. There's like a, a better ad split for 60-40. Right. Yeah. And if you have an org, it's probably easier to get. I don't think they're doing it anymore as of like six months ago. So maybe like December-ish. Like they stopped doing the sixty forty ad split for certain partners, mm. so now you have to get a Twitch contract, which is even more of a <laughs> hassle to get because you have to be a top tier streamer in order to get a contract. See, and this is this is why I people kept asking me months ago, like why I was flopping back and forth between Twitch and YouTube, and like doing YouTube gaming, and it was just like there is no platform for YouTube gaming, like it's just not. It's not there. It's got crazy discoverability. Yeah, sure. And like VOD potential is crazy. Yeah, sure. But it doesn't have nearly the community aspects or the community tools that Twitch does. Like Twitch is just like on a whole different level when it comes to live streaming. So it just, I don't know. When, it, when you're averaging like hundreds of people in your stream, I mean, I would, uh, I guess I can't really talk. How, how the fuck would I know? I can barely get seven people yeah. in stream on, on a regular basis. But I imagine with that many people having to just like stream to a different platform seems like it would be the way to go, especially because you're getting paid by the it's like I used to tell Heavenly. I was like, yeah, when you stream on on Twitch, like that's cool. Like you're relying on subs and like these few ads here and there and like donations. Cool. But when you stream on YouTube and you're already monetized, that's money by the minute. Like. If people are just in yeah. there, you're getting paid. So it's like they don't even have to watch stream. They just have to have it open, which seemed like a much better uh, decision for me when it was coming to like streaming games or like streaming any type of content. So and not only that, it turns into a VOD and all of that retention and stuff gets calculated in the VOD and gets calculated into ad dollars. People don't even have to watch the ads. They just have to be counted as a view during a time an ad would have played so even if an ad doesn't play for somebody you, that's still an ad dollar that's paid so it's like I, you know you know i think the best part is like with that is that with youtube there's also they kind of care a little bit more in a weird way about their streamers right not fully right not for their like not partnered streamers but i think they've been in the scene that they're trying to get the streaming scene to like oh yeah so they got a little better they got to treat everybody to better. A little bit. yeah they're trying to treat yeah. people good and make it seem like yeah we take we take care of our creators over here and it's just like all right yeah sure you do but yeah they only give a, i think they really only give a fuck about the the partners that they have signed so far right like the people that they've given deals to but I mean, I think slowly but surely they're trying to make YouTube gaming a better space. It's not the best, but it is a better space than it was at least a year ago. Right. And even even before that, like it used to be a fucking wasteland like two years ago. If. I, I think that begs the question, though, like 
is YouTube the better option now? Like, if you're already established on YouTube, right, or established enough, it feels like YouTube will get you more money, right? right. Just from what you your anecdote alone, yeah. that you'll probably make more money from YouTube. But the thing is, if you let's say you do a crazy event, like I, I YouTube Ludwig was talking about this. If you know him, he was talking about how if he did an event on YouTube, like yeah, it would have done fine. It would have done like 30, 40 k or whatever on his on his event on his YouTube channel. But if he would have done it on Twitch, it would have got like a hundred. Mm. And uh, that that to me, I was like, well, that's the trade off. Unfortunately, is that you either you either make more money on just normal streams or you do a big event on Twitch and then you you know what I mean then you lo- you stabilize after that but i mean the money uh, is still there it's just the money would m- be better or the views would be better on Twitch but there i don't think there's that much money in Twitch i mean like, i guess this is money, this but. is all i mean let's 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 be real who we're really talking to at this point is is mostly people at the beginning. We're not talking to people like of course. towards the middle. And even that's the funny thing. Even like these courses and these gurus and stuff like that, they don't target people in the middle. Like I've actually like talked to Roberto Blake about this. I was like, how come people don't make more content on when you're in the middle? And like like trying to go from 5,000 to 10,000. He was like, the average person doesn't even have more than 100 like subscribers like why why would educators target that specific group of people everybody's like every year uh he explained it to me this way he's like every year people have the same new year's resolutions and they fail by january 3rd it's like why would we not target people that are trying to start something and they're trying to start over and over and over again and they really just need motivation to actually do the thing that they want to do and i was like damn like like that makes sense i paid this man a thousand dollars for coaching by the way like that that's how, that's how much like I'm invested in this particular like like piece of work. Like I I I, I want to like make content an actual job so much so that I'm willing to pay somebody who's very successful at it, who makes millions of dollars a year doing this stuff and having him audit my youtube channel and like audit my social media and all this other stuff like paying this man this money just felt like paying for a class like Mm. you know the same way you pay like tuition in college and stuff like that except when i did pay tuition i felt like i didn't get much out of it in comparison to paying this now Mm. so you know having him on a weekly basis go through with me and coach like hey maybe we Maybe you should focus in this area or you should focus on this niche and this demographic, which is why for the past, like there was like one week I uploaded five videos straight and then I had that work trip and I haven't uploaded a video since, but Mm. he took the analytics based off of that and some were within my niche, some were outside of my niche and some of them were like all over the place and he was letting me know that hey it might be time to pivot away from something different he said any time i've like been making videos on anime or having some type of like content where i'm just talking always does longevity wise does better than some of the gaming content he was like yeah you might want to consider separating your gaming from your anime stuff and i was like yeah but that kind of like rips the home apart like when people find this channel and he was like, yeah, I, I I understand that. And I get that. But for the time being, you're not, Ooh, excuse me. He was saying, you're not really at the point to where you can make a decision like that anyway, because people aren't even finding you. He's like, every time you upload, you lose 10 subs. So really either there's some type of bot on your channel that is deleting all of these subs, which at this point it's been over 2000 botted subs. That's sounds impossible to me. Uh, yeah, on a 7,000 sub YouTube channel. Is oh, it was, kinda... it, I mean, it was at eight. Like, I, I had hit eight when before Heavenly had moved out. And then I had that, like, nine-month hiatus of not being able to upload because I was worried about where the fuck I was going to live. Uh, yeah. 
and I couldn't upload. So I was like driving Uber and Lyft every single day. So I, I couldn't make any videos. I do. I do remember that. That yeah. was a rough time. That was a terrible arc. Oh my God. Holy shit. I would. Man, that's it, crazy. That was a year ago. Yeah. Huh? No, that was two years ago, buddy. I've been in this apartment for two years now. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that been a, was that's, a long time ago. Yeah, that was a cool minute. So he let me know that for the time being, it's probably going to be advantageous to these other YouTube channels if I were to just start elsewhere and like create like the Just J Gaming platform, the Just J Sama is where we talk about anime and then all of these other channels and stuff because they can grow and cultivate based off of youtube's need and algorithmic push for new channels to be successful so mm. i was like okay so that's why i didn't upload the black adam trailer because i was like that's gonna go on the that's gonna go on the cinema channel for sure like yeah. that's a cinema ba movie based content and you know that's that's where that's gonna be housed so not only that it's like every time you create a new niche or a new topic or a new channel per se you create a new persona of yourself on the internet nobody knows who that channel is you can be whoever the fuck you want to be on there like you don't have to abide by the same rules that you've been abiding you don't have to even go by the same name if you really don't want to like you could just be a completely different content creator with a completely different alias online and you could blow that channel up being a faceless content creator and i was mm. like oh shit like Okay, so, you know, but now I have the, the cinema channel and now I have, you know, the podcast has been its own thing and uh, so is my main channel. I don't know about separating gaming from it, which is probably why I'm bouncing back and forth between uh, Spy Family when it's not getting copyright and Apex Legends because, you know, those are the two mediums that I consume the most right now. Regularly. Yeah, yeah. so, you know. It made more sense money-wise to, at one point, convert the main YouTube channel to either only anime or only gaming, and then every single day live stream, like, on that channel, and then take the VOD and upload a shorter version of it while still making the YouTube live stream available. And he was like, that's essentially using the same piece of content and doubling up your revenue, even though it may be little but it provides consistency and it shows uh, YouTube that there there's traffic coming to this channel. He also let me know mm. that the age of my channel also matters. So because my channel was officially created, quote unquote, and started in like 2012 or something like that is when my YouTube account was created. They also mm. take that into consideration for their algorithm push. So for a channel that old, to suddenly be in people's recommended is not going to work. It was perfectly fine for the first five years of me creating my YouTube channel and like uploading and stuff, but taking that into account and the fact that I've been creating content for seven years consecutively at this point, like it's, it's just unheard of. Like it's mm -hmm. either you fell in the algorithm at one point in time or you just don't. And so that's how YouTube operates. Like, yeah, your account may be seven years old, but we have no reason to push it. You're old on this platform. So, you know, the likelihood mm. of the likelihood of, hey, if you haven't hit it yet, it's like, give it up. Like try something else. That's the way YouTube yeah. sees it. That's literally how he described it. Like, and then he got a, a YouTube rep on our call and they verified pretty much the same information. Like, yeah, like new content creators, we would like to see them try and hit the 4,000 hours of watch time and the thousand subs like we want to see that we want to pay more people and I just thought that was so crazy considering how anti-creator the rest of their policies and procedures are so it's like mm. and I I kind of presented that a little bit but not the same way I did just now I was just like oh okay but you know YouTube's rules kind of don't they don't state the same thing and he was like oh yeah you know that's just a lot of like uh bad apples that are still being worked out and i was like bad apples like what kind of kind of fucking terminology is this so yeah <laughs> i don't know man i don't know I it's interesting though because you've been having that that sub issue for a, like a long time now and, and it doesn't i thought it doesn't look like it's being oh. fixed anytime soon either <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't. Honestly, it's been so long. I don't know what you would have to do to like stop the sub loss, right? I guess you'd have to be at a total positive, right? A net positive of subs. But the way I see it is, though, if you're losing 10 every day and every time you upload and with the the way the algorithm is set up for you, there's just it just seems impossible for you to get crawl back up. Right. It's like you're rock climbing. And like every time you go up, like every time you climb a rock, that rock falls. Right. And then you fall a little bit farther down each time. I don't I don't I don't know. Yeah, and uh, when we were going over the numbers, so even at the loss of 10 every upload, uh, in between those uploads, I actually gained 8. So uh, some some days I gained 4, some days I gained 6. But it's usually either 4, 6, or 8 increments as far as like new subs coming in, but 10 will suddenly disappear out the door. Like I can't even say that they're leaving because even like as I was on the call with these guys, I, I was like, hey, is there... Like, what's the issue here? And it's just an anomaly. It's just one of those things where it's like, okay, it's probably a combination of people actually unsubscribing, uh, people's uh, YouTube accounts going into default, which means they haven't used their account in so long that it's like, it's going into disabled mode, essentially. So it doesn't count as a sub. Okay. So it gets deleted. Or actual like spam accounts and people getting reported and those accounts are being deleted. So it's a combination of those three things that are happening to my channel. And it's like, but here's the part where I don't believe it. It's because it's been two and a half consecutive years of this happening. At one point yeah. in time, I had hit 8,000 subscribers. Now I'm at 65. So it's like, how do you explain that? Like, that's just an anomaly. That's just a weird thing. So and they didn't have any answers I, I also... for me. I think the the other part of it too is that sometimes I don't get your videos in my sub box, and I'm I have the notifications on. I've got you know what I mean. I'm subbed obviously, but I'm confused as to sometimes I, I like I got your last video, but I didn't get any of the videos before that. I didn't. I don't even think I got the Spy Family video when it dropped. I got a whole different video. And you know what's interesting? Uh. It's also the same for my shorts. The shorts have also been a huge detriment to like every time I uploaded a, a new short, it would count as a video and I'd lose 10 subs. Oh, wow. So that's why, you know, the other day when we got on, I was like, oh, yeah, in the last 30 days, I've lost almost 60 subs. So, wow. Yeah, and it was I was losing them off of shorts. Like the shorts were doing great. They were getting like hundreds, if not some of them have got thousands of views. But yeah, I would still lose ten subs but gain eight. Or lose ten and then gain six. So it it just like didn't it didn't make any sense. Hmm. So but you know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to figure this thing out. And I think uh diversifying the things that I want to talk about and creating multiple YouTube channels is really the only way to go at this point. I unfortunately I mean, lose yeah. the longevity of like, like if I wanted to show somebody my channel and be like, Oh, this is how long I've been creating videos. It's like, okay, but there's no history here. Like now that I've taken down all of the, like my first, very first video on my channel was like a bloodborne Naruto video that's gone. Uh, all of the Heavenly Controller era stuff is gone. Uh, I've had to unlist yeah, those. It was a long era, too. It was. It was. And what's what's crazy is, like, because I'm applying to this studio, they're going to want to see my podcast work. And it's like, I can't even use that stuff because he took it down. So it's like, and, like, obviously, like, people have no idea, like, the Heavenly Podcast had Just Jay Sama on it. And there's like, even when you go to YouTube and you type in Just Jay Sama, his channel comes up before mine. <laughs> so it's like, what the fuck? Like, so, you know, it's just a between a combination of that, not being able to find my videos, YouTube suppressing certain things. Like, it just doesn't, none of it makes any sense. And like, as I sit here and like explain it, it kind of frustrates me 
because there's nothing that can be done about it. Like, no matter how much I talk about it, no matter how many videos I make about it, like, it's just never going anywhere. Like, it's like this information stops here on this podcast. Like, it doesn't go any further than that. I don't, we don't currently have any, we don't have like, uh, I'm Dante or Burleazy or Afro Senju or any, literally any big content creators watching our stuff. Like, let's be clear. Like, other creators help boost other creators, and we don't have any. Like, we don't have any any creators in our Discord. We don't have any creators in our in our in our network. We just don't. And this was like mm. a a really big frustrating thing when I when we even started the podcast because I was like, all right, clearly I can take Plank with me everywhere I go. Plank is just going to be my producer for everything. Cool, no problem. Any type of online stuff, I'm going to put Plank's name on it, whether he helped or not. Cool, cool, cool. No problem. I can help one person successfully to where if you wanted to and you were like, Jay, I need I need credits because I'm applying for this job and I just want to show them like, hey, I've worked on podcast. I've worked on this. I've worked on that. I'd be like, yeah, here's my email. I'm putting all of your – your name is literally in everything. Your, your link is literally in everything. Everything that you work on with me says produced by Plank because – that's the background that we're going for. Like that we're going somewhere together. Right. So at the beginning of this podcast, when I was like, oh, okay, we're going to get these other people that want to be content creators. And then three months in, it's like not even three months, three weeks in. And it wasn't even, nobody's actively creating content. Nobody's getting bigger. Nobody's spending a thousand dollars to figure out why their channel isn't growing. Like that's just not happening. These are normal people with hobbies. It, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, but hobbies, jobs, hobbies, jobs, girlfriends, significant others, like all this other stuff. And here I am the more, the, it just seems like the crazier it is. Like the more time I spend on YouTube, the more time I spend on learning to be a content creator, the more time I figure out how to make money as a content creator. Cause, cause let's not get it twisted. My channel still accumulates hundreds of dollars a month. Like I may not have crazy views. I may not have viral views, but every month, those Assassin's Creed videos go up five to 10,000 views. Let's not get it twisted. I'm still making hundreds of dollars a month off of this stuff. Like, it is what it is. Like, I may put out a video it, itself that makes more money than some of these other creators in a year just because I know how to use SEO and, and their evergreen content. They just last for a really long time and they accumulate views over time. So it's like, also, my CPM is incredibly high. Last I checked, it was like 6.7. So for every thousand views, that's six dollars and seven cents. Wait, six dollars and seventy cents? Like for a thousand views, you're getting paid six dollars. Some people are getting like a tenth of that. So mm. if YouTube it really is putting me in a place of suppressance and you're not gonna get views, you're not gonna get subs, we're not gonna put you in front of people. Well, how come the algorithm is monetarily pushing my content? So mm. It, some something's not right here but you know what do i know i it, and to go back to what i was saying the more i've been diving deeper and deeper into being a content creator for a living i'm losing literally all of my relationships like everything everything in my life is falling apart and i don't <laughs> it, it's crazy because like the amount of focus it takes to do this stuff and i've heard berlizzi say it i've heard i'm dante say it i've heard uh, Mr. B say it. These guys were like, hey, we can't, you can't cultivate a relationship with another person and be a full time content creator. You can't. It's impossible. Especially starting out because you have to put in, you know, the average big content creator. Let's say Mr. Beast does 40 hours a week. Well, Mr. Beast is already put on. He's got millions of subs. As a person with less than a thousand or less than 10,000, you have to do four times as much work. Because his his yeah, videos are gonna hit the algorithm, no problem. But like, oh, 100. Yeah, his but, videos, all of his videos do trending. Yeah, exactly. And he, he could, has editors. He could literally do nothing and hit trending. Like that's how crazy it is. Like that's yeah, how much exactly. YouTube is like. Oh, we gotta push this guy's stuff. His, I can't even imagine what his like ad rates are. I can't even imagine. Gotta like, be insane. It, it, it would have to be because on the lowest of the low scale, right? If mine, and I'm excited about it, is 6.7, the lowest, like the lowest content creator, you know, that's making money, making, you know, imagine what his yeah. is. 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, like way more than mine. So, you know, as I'm destroying these relationships, it's making me like closer and closer to like, I don't have anything else to focus on except for my goal. Yeah. Which is good, but also at the same time, I'm not gonna lie, man, it's extremely fucking lonely. Like, it really is. Like, obviously, you know, I come in the Discord and we hang out and we play games and sometimes we'll make an episode, sometimes we'll make a Patreon, sometimes we'll like, but like, if all we did was work, like, every time we hopped in the Discord, it'd be, it would be boring as fuck. Yeah. So. I mean, the thing is, it's, we're in an unfortunate part of like the process, right? Where we need to work a hundred times more than anyone, you know what I mean? Of a vast majority of people, right? When you're in the very beginning stages, it's like you're, you got to work, 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 or you're just not going to make it. Right. Or, or you're not going to grow, or you're not going to, you know what I mean? You're going to fall off the algorithm, or you're just, you're not going to get pushed, right? And the thing is, you got to build a catalog, right? So even if we have nothing to talk about, suddenly we're just going to have to find something. And that's the unfortunate truth, even if we don't want to. Right. I know that's not the fun thing, but it's like, hey, man, if we want success, it, it can't like success is not fun. Right. Let's let's be real. It gets fun after the success, 100%. Oh, yeah, yeah. But chasing success, you're not going to Fucking 10 fun. bitches on a yacht. Oh, that. Oh, the horror. Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> How could I? My new yacht. <laughs> not my new yacht. <laughs> not the woman I'm fucking in Gucci flip flops. Oh, no. <laughs> what is, like... what's, uh, what's that line? Uh, I don't know if it's. I think it's by Travis Scott. And he says. If they not fucking, they not coming. Simple as oh, that. God. So, and it's the same thing with creating content, man. Like, yo, if, if we not fucking, we not coming. Seriously, like, we. I, I see what you're saying. It, you know, I wanted at some point, like, try and do shit daily, and especially because for the last three months, you know, after my accident and stuff like that, there was almost literally no excuse. Like, yeah. So I don't know, man, and I I do go out a lot and like spend a lot of time like talking with people and trying to get them to like uh, this is just me in any social situation i'm just like oh yeah i'm a youtuber like i just casually slip that in like and i'm trying to get people to actually give a shit about not just my youtube channel but everything else so i think now that now that i've committed to it i have to talk to roberto about this tomorrow now that i thought about it i think i need to convert the main channel to literally just me talking about stuff like, I, I mean, listen, if you can talk about shit for hours, then I'd uh, like as long as it's easy. Right. You know what I mean? You're you're obviously a great editor, so th- you can make it good. Right. Like even if what you're talking about is fucking boring. Right. There are ways to make it. So, oh, yeah, well, just because I talked about some random bullshit for 35 doesn't mean I can't edit this to be like funny as fuck. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just the thing. Like, I you probably don't want to edit all day, but like, oh, that, like man, that going back to grueling. what I was saying. But you know what I mean? Like, if you want it, like you got to work a hundred times harder than everybody else. So you got to be on your rock leash. Shit. You know what? Like, man? Just because you can't use ninjutsu, so you gotta you gotta work <laughs> fucking hard. You gotta be the best type. Motherfuckers out here throwing was. planets at each other, bro. <laughs> yeah, me. literally. <laughs> This guy called a meteor from the sky and I have to fucking break it with my fist. This is fucking oh my ridiculous. God, this is insane. <laughs> but yeah, man, I uh I don't know. I don't know. I funny enough, now that I've gone back to special effects editing and like opening after effects back up and really getting back into the groove of it, I see why I hated it. The monotonous yeah. like single click, single frame of like I want to do all of this extraordinary shit. So just for a rundown, uh, it, my first video on the cinema channel, like that's like our legitimate video is it's essentially a video of me like introducing the new channel, right? It's going to be the channel trailer. It's me getting out of bed, talking about my history with YouTube a little bit. And it's just clips of me getting ready in the morning and like starting like to create content. Then at one point, maybe about like halfway through the video, 
I'm like, okay, I'm done. I've clocked out of work. And I go and I sit on the couch and I turn on some anime and it's full metal. And I talk about how, you know, the one thing I wanted to do as a filmmaker is change the world. And I snap my fingers and like sparks come off of my finger and like my whole hand catches on fire, right? Mm. Just that one fucking part, for it to look as crispy as I want it to, I'm still not even there. Like, mm. I put maybe... I want to say 30 hours just into that one section. I haven't even cut the rest of the video, mind you. Like, cutting a video and, like, putting it together and sequencing it and, like, making sure the audio is crisp and making sure the audio is right and color correction. All that shit is super easy. The monotonous fucking flickering of a flame is killing me because I have flashbacks to when I was in film school and just to do the simplest thing takes so fucking long. It makes my eyes bleed. Like, I actually want to tear my eyes out. And you know what's interesting? If I had to give you a progress report of, like, where things are at, it's probably 50%. Mm. Probably 50 Now, I could, let's not get it twisted. I could drop it right now. But it's not up to my standard as I would like to have as a filmmaker going forward for a YouTube video. Sure. Fine. Cool. Whatever. But like to establish a foothold that, Oh, this is a filmmaking content creator. That would be blasphemy on the same channel mm. that I'm going to talk about my favorite movies, my favorite cinematography, uh, my favorite pieces of equipment to use. Like, like I'm really doubling down on this shit. I'm even going to make a whole like separate TikTok just for that shit. And then I also had an idea. Funny enough, this is a tangent was thinking about doing a TikTok just for like my villainous board games. <laughs> and I was going to do that shit because I was like looking into it and people like really niche shit on TikTok. And they're like, oh, this is crazy. Like, this is so cool. And this type of stuff blows up. So I was thinking, oh, fuck it. I'm going to put that on there. And then I'm going to make a villainous video. So that's on mm -hmm. there. Uh, I've been working on writing Isekai Battle Royale, which is turning out to be way more difficult than I thought because uh, it just seemed like oh you just get a bunch of isekai characters and they fight each other like it's fucking jump force cool not that hard uh very hard very, very not only is it very hard but I have to take into consideration what I'm capable of filming with the people I have access to and uh it's not easy it's not mm -hmm. easy because back when I had like five six people that I could just like call and invite hey come and hop in this short film they can't do that anymore they have significant others they have relationships they have jobs uh two of them have kids one of them is not answering my phone calls anymore so it's like man i i don't know what to do so i have to figure out a way around this hurdle but mm -hmm. you know hopefully i get this job at this studio that'll be lovely uh we'll be able to get some more podcasting stuff going i'll get hopefully paid more if not paid on a regular basis that'd be really nice um and i'll be able to work with other people who are in the podcast space other content creators uh you know charlemagne comes in in their studio all the time like him him and andrew Schultz are filming every week so when they're in la it's just like okay that's a cool opportunity and then even if i wanted to because the people who own the studio are also based in new york I could just be like, hey, look, I don't know if I'm doing, you know, maybe a couple months after. Hey, if I'm doing a good job, I, I'd like to work, you know, at the New York office. That opens up a whole other set of possibilities for me. And because I don't have a relationship, because I don't have kids, because I don't have all this other stuff, I can move on a whim. I can do all of these things. I couldn't imagine working with other people who were not able to be malleable in that way. Like, that's going to be hard to work with those people. So, mm -hmm. you know, all this to say, uh, new YouTube content coming. That's, that's it. All this to say that. Yeah. Like, it's just taking me a long time to just work on that stuff. That's all. Yeah, so. you, actually, just to, if we're just announcing shit, hey, man, we might get some plank streams. We might get some plank streams. What? Maybe a little bit of plank content, too. Right, listen. Maybe I, a little bit of YouTube videos. I think, I think you should save that for next week's episode and really, Well, next really week is what? That. 
<laughs> next week is what? Uh, I just don't want you saying that on a on a Patreon early access. And then oh, next thing you know, oh, this is not a Patreon. No, sir. Fuck it. I mean, the conversation too good. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. This is bonus content. Bonus content is cool. Yeah. So. I mean, listen, we. Uh, I I mean, the thing is, I, the thing I want for this show, just to you know what I mean, just circle back. I, I want this show to be more consistent. Like I, honestly, like us doing honestly us doing three, two to three episodes a week, right? One being a Patreon, one being a main episode. Sometimes not two Patreon or whatever. I've enjoyed it, right? Like we sometimes we don't have shit to talk about, but sometimes just bullshitting is enough. Right, right. And I yeah, think and I've, we... I've also really liked that. You know, the the one guaranteed podcast episode, then everything else is either Patreon, early access, or fuck it. Hey, here's a bonus episode. Exactly. Yeah, I've I've really fucked with that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't think this show could be daily. I just don't. You don't think so? No, I mean, there's I don't always think there's, there's always something. To talk about. Yeah, there's always something to talk about. Like one topic. I mean, yeah, we could just like Google something and find one topic. Like, yeah, I, but we know, have though, to find it interesting in order for us to talk about it, though. Exactly, and I don't know if I would. I just think the amount of effort we'd have to start putting in is not what we're. I mean, maybe if there's eventually like a return, right? right. Like, because what we got right now is just not feasible to do an episode every day, right? With conflicting schedules and conflicting time zones. Right. And just the fact that sometimes there's just nothing to do. Uh, It's just, I don't think this could be daily. A cut like by, you know, a couple times a week, 100%. Mm. 100% easy. A couple, uh, a couple main episodes, maybe a Patreon. Easy, hundred mm-hmm. percent. But daily, seven days a week, seven shows a week. I, I just for or at least five. Pod ta- yeah, I mean five, three, yeah, five. Mon- yeah, Mon- Monday through Friday. I mean, we only need what one. What do we want to be? I guess we could work it out now. Do we want to be an entertainment based podcast? Do we want to stay in gaming, or do we want to do a little bit of everything? Like. I mean, because I'm cool Listen. talking about movies and stuff like that, you know, and just funny shit that comes across my, you know, Google News Feed. But, I mean, you know, only if it aligns with the rest of the show. I mean, uh, it's not a hill I, I want to I am down on, so. to talk about everything, but if we talk about movies, I'm going to have to put way more effort because I do not like watching movies. That's okay. You know what's interesting? You don't have to be the person that talks about movies. You can talk about how uninterested you are and the things that would make you interested in whatever movie it is that we're talking about you know that my, be, my that thing is your I pov just, i do not know if that that you know what i mean i don't know what would be more it what would be better for both of us right like mm-hmm. you love movies i like playing video games and being a uh you know being a little bitch and i like i like okay, music yeah too. i, don't I like music you need to throw that last part in there it's a true um mm-hmm. But I like, you know, I like gaming. I like music. But I don't, I don't know. It's fine. Like, I, I can t- literally talk about whatever. Hmm. Okay. I just have to put more effort into movies than I would anything else. I mean. I like movies. It's just, I I don't have the opportunity to see a lot of movies. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I also spend a lot of time watching TV shows and shit like that. So, you know. Yeah. Works out uh, a little bit. But yeah, you know, as long as we have something to talk about, I think more people give a shit that we actually have a show out on a weekly basis and they don't really care what we talk about. I don't think anybody does, really. I mean, yeah, so. to be honest, uh, not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, you know. But, uh, yeah, yeah, man, that's... I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I think that's, that's it. pretty much that it. Good. It's a great episode. <laughs> That was great. Yeah, that hey, was hey. a solid hour, I yeah, think. Yeah, definitely. I'm not paying attention to the to the timer. I i oh, totally yeah. stop even oh 59 minutes okay yeah, yeah it's a solid hour thank you guys for listening by the way uh we'd like to thank all of the audio listeners uh spotify itunes uh stitcher google Podcasts. all of you guys thank you so much for listening if you guys want more uh exclusive content make sure to go to patreon.com slash canon culture also to the video people watching thank you guys so much for watching whatever shitty video game i have on in the background here um 
we want to say thank you guys. Make sure you go and listen to the audio version. If you're listening to the audio version, why don't you go on and go and click the description, man, and go on and watch the go on and watch the video version. I know you just heard the entire thing. You heard this this amazing content. You know this great conversation with producer Plank and I. Um, make sure you guys let us know on social media. Make sure to follow everybody's links in the description. Even though the rest of the team is not here, I still managed to put their you know their their socials in there even though they have absolutely nothing to do with the show so you know go and show everybody some love uh if you're new please please go and do that uh and we will catch you guys next week plank any uh any closing statements today uh i don't have any closing statements but i'd like to say thank you uh make sure to fuck with everybody else though you know what i mean they're doing something interesting i'm not really doing nothing interesting so absolutely, absolutely. always make sure to tap in with your boys you know what i mean Make sure to check the links. Yeah, true. That's true, about it. True. Make so, sure to tap in. That's it. You know, pretty soon, if you guys don't uh, keep supporting the show, we got a OnlyFans.com slash Canning Culture, baby. So, oh, God, you know. we're going to be busting it down. Woo! Oh, no. Run it back a little bit. Nah, nah, not huh? like <laughs> That sounds terrible. That sounds atrocious. So, uh, oh, no, that sounds fine to me. <laughs> for the bag, baby. Oh, my God. But we <laughs> want to thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you guys next week. Make sure to keep it canon.